Hi, I'm Thomas G. Robinson, and I'm here to discuss the cases New York Times v. Sullivan and Gertz v. Robert Welch, Inc. for my master's class, New Media Journalism, under the instruction of Tammy Morris at Full Sail University. The Precedent Setting Defamation Cases New York Times v. Sullivan and Gertz v. Welch. Who are the parties to the case and what facts led to their dispute? The parties to this case are Ralph D. Abernathy, Fred L. Shuttlesworth, SSCA Sr., and J. E. Lowery of the New York Times, Ad, and Montgomery Police Commissioner L. B. Sullivan. Sullivan claims the New York Times defamed him by running an ad that criticized him and his police force handling the peaceful demonstrations and marches by Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and those marching with him, stating inaccuracies of the arrest record of Dr. King, whether the students involved in the march were expelled from school, as well as what song was being sung at the march. Why did Sullivan feel his reputation was damaged by the New York Times publication? Though he was not named directly, Sullivan felt that the advertisement, which was a full-page ad, made it appear that the police under his command were violating the rights of those marching. What are the key elements of a defamation claim? Since Sullivan was a public official, what did he have to prove in this particular case? The ad claimed that nine students were expelled for leading protests at the state capitol and that the entire student body protested or refused to register for classes. However, the students faced expulsion over a sit-in at the cafeteria that was done on a completely different day. The other claim, that Dr. King's peaceful marches were met with intimidation and violence, and his home was bombed, almost killing his wife and child, and that they were arrested him seven times and have charged him with perjury. Sullivan stated that the police were not implicated in the bombings and demanded that the New York Times retract the ad. He stated the ad's inaccuracies harmed his reputation. Alabama law in the 1960s classified publications that brought a person, quote, into public contempt, unquote, or injured their reputation as, quote, libelous per se, unquote. The only thing Sullivan had to do was convince a jury that everything said in the given publication was untrue. What was the U.S. Supreme Court's decision and why did it make that decision? Although the jury awarded Sullivan $500,000, the New York Times appealed first to the Alabama Supreme Court, who upheld the ruling, then to the Supreme Court, United States of America, who overturned the ruling after granting this case certiorari in 1963. The ruling by the Supreme Court reversed the decision stated that a public figure, quote, plaintiff has to prove that the things written about them were untrue and damage their reputation, and that they have to show that the person who wrote them knew the statements were untrue, but published them anyway. Part 2. Gertz v. Welch Who are the parties to the case? Was the petitioner a private person or public figure? The parties in this case are Robert Welch, Inc., the publication owner, and Elmer Gertz, the attorney who represented the Nelson family in a civil lawsuit against police officer Richard Nuccio, who shot the child of the Nelson family. Although the petitioner was a well-known attorney in his community, he held no public office, nor was he considered a public figure. What were the allegations, defamatory statements about Gertz in the American Opinion article? The respondent, Robert Welch, Inc., publishes a monthly magazine called The American Opinion, which spews views of the John Birch Society. The magazine is well known for the following outlandish views. Early in the 1960s, it began to warn the public of a nationwide conspiracy to discredit local law enforcement agencies and create a national police force to support communist dictatorship. The magazine published an article titled Frame Up, Richard Nuccio and the Warren Police portrayed Gertz as an architect of the framing of Nuccio and of being an official of the Marxist League for Industrial Democracy, which has advocated the violent seizure of our government. Labeled Gertz as a Leninist, 
quote, unquote, and a, quote, communist fronter, unquote, also calling him an officer of the National Lawyers Guild, which is described as a communist organization involved in the communist attack on Chicago police at the 1968 Democratic Convention. What was done to confirm the accuracy of those allegations against Gertz? The managing editor of the magazine made no effort to verify or substantiate the charges made against the petitioner. Instead, they further added an opinion editorial, displaying a picture of the petitioner naming him and calling him the Red Guild Harasser of Nuccio. The article was placed for sale across the country and especially on the streets of Chicago. There was absolutely no research or investigation of the allegations against Gertz by the reporter or the publication, American Opinion. How do you think these allegations affected Gertz's reputation? He claimed that the falsehoods published by the respondent injured his reputation as a lawyer and as a citizen. What would you have done differently than Welch to avoid the lawsuit? The managing editor of the magazine again made no effort to verify or substantiate the charges made against the petitioner. I would have made the very easy decision to actually investigate the claims of the advertisement and would have refrained from publishing an opinion editorial further damaging the petitioner and printing misstatements and accusations of ac communist activity without proof. What is your state's defamation law? According to the Digital Media Law Project, the definition in California is as follows. Defamation, which consists of both libel and slander, is defined by case law and statute in California, Civil Code 44, 45A, and 46. The elements of a defamation claim are 1. Publication of a statement of fact. 2. That is false. 3. Unprivileged. 4. Has a natural tendency to injure or which causes, quote, special damage, unquote. And 5. The def defendant's fault in publishing the statement amounted to at least negligence. Publication which may be written or oral means communication to a third person who understands the defamatory meaning of the statement and its application to the person to whom reference is made. Publication need not be to the public at large. Communication to a single individual other than the plaintiff is sufficient. Republishing a defamatory statement made by another is generally not protected. As a matter of law, in cases involving public figures or matters of public concern, the burden is on the plaintiff to prove falsity in a defamation action. See Nizam Aldine v. City of Oakland, 1996. In cases involving matters of pure private concern, the burden of proving truth is on the defendant. See Smith v. Maldonado, 1999. A reader further points out that even when the burden is technically on the plaintiff to prove falsity, the plaintiff can easily shift the burden to the defendant simply by testifying that the statements at issue are false. How can you relate what you have learned from the Sullivan and Gertz cases to your future work in communications industry? It's very important to protect yourself from writing ads and news stories and articles and other journalism activities, broadcasts, documentaries, etc., based on rumor or innuendo, or false advertisements. It is important to research the subject in which you are reporting on and thoroughly investigate all information available to prove the story you are writing is factual and contains only truths. Failure to do so will only open your company and you to a potential lawsuit if the person or subject of your article feels that you have subjected them to slander, defamation, and or malicious lies. The following citations are made in the research of this slideshow, as well as photo credits listed for the photos used in this slideshow. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this presentation, which is a Thomas G. Robinson TGR Jams production. Copyright September 2022 by TGR Jams Productions. All rights reserved. Thank you very much.